Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new updates coming from our beautiful neighbor, Mars. And there's actually been quite a lot of different updates in the last few months that unfortunately I did not get to mention until now, although none of them are super groundbreaking, yet still kind of interesting. And I actually wanted to start with some of the new pictures that were released by NASA in the last few months, like this unusual picture of a rock balancing on another rock. Naturally, not something we see on Mars every day, and naturally something that is going to produce quite a lot of conspiracy theories, if it hasn't already, but this is something that's actually pretty common in various locations where there is quite a lot of different types of erosion, usually through wind. And in more scientific terms, it's usually referred to as aeolian erosion, with the word aeolian just meaning winds. But this here was still a pretty interesting discovery, and it's part of the process usually referred to as hoodoo, something that you can usually find in a lot of different dry locations, with a lot of wind that erodes rock over time. Here's actually one that looks even cooler, with this picture being taken in Turkey. If you want to learn more about this process, there is a link in the description. And actually, a lot of these new pictures have been revealing some incredible detail when it comes to different types of erosion that occurred on Mars over the period of billions of years. Here is another beautiful image from the Curiosity rover that shows us various layers of deposit with quite a lot of erosion as well. But even though some processes are very similar to planet Earth, some are somewhat different, for one reason or another. For example, very recently, the scientists identified unusual green sand that was present in several locations on the surface of Mars. Or I guess slightly greenish in hue, not really green, like typical grass or something. But nevertheless, this is an intriguing discovery because of what creates this hue. And also because it was actually discovered in a lot of different locations very close to Jezero Crater. Now in this case, just like on Earth, the sand itself is formed through various aeolian processes that over time degrade the rock, turning it into tiny particles. But unlike on Earth, the sand here appears both red because of oxidation of various metallic components and green because of the presence of what's known as olivine, the mineral responsible for various gems like peridot that you see right here. Which by itself is a pretty exciting discovery for various geologists because it's going to provide them with a lot of information about the evolution of surface of Mars. We don't really know where this leads yet, but future will tell. And then we had this beautiful image that literally looks like an alien planet. The image showing us unusual formations, unusual polygons, and strange blue-like emissions coming from various regions, with a slightly zoomed-in version of this sort of looking like this. And these shapes are formed in slightly different ways, so the polygons are formed because of these seasonal changes. It's actually created by both water ice and carbon dioxide ice. And in this case, inside the soil, there are two types of ice, water ice and carbon dioxide ice. Water ice tends to form these unusual shapes with the sublimation of CO2 ice when it gets a little bit warmer, creating all kinds of additional features, including various hair-like formations you see everywhere. Something that pretty much repeats every year on Mars, and something that can be compared to a water cycle here on planet Earth, except that here it's the CO2 cycle, and the actual liquid does not exist. The solid becomes gas, and the gas then becomes solid once again. But what about these unusual blue formations? Well, the explanation here is also pretty easy. All of this is produced by various types of underground deposits that essentially turn into gas, and then become distributed across the surface, on top of the ice itself. And this is actually something that's been seen in a lot of different places. And so none of these are features that have been unknown to us, and they've actually been explained years and years ago. But this new image is definitely very beautiful. And this one just looks really eerie. Although very similar features do exist even here on planet Earth, usually in very icy conditions, and of course have been seen on objects like Pluto, the image from which you see right here. Anyway, moving on to other discoveries in regards to water on Mars or at least water that used to exist here. Now, all of these new studies basically tell us that water was almost certain in a lot of different locations. And more specifically, several studies already discovered that there were a lot of different lakes and quite a lot of different deposits, simply based on the observations of what's known as hydrated rocks. Here are just some of the detections from the recent study. And so some of the recent discoveries suggest that the water was basically everywhere at some point, or almost everywhere. We're not sure how deep it was, or when exactly it disappeared, yet, but the presence of water is definitely there. It's even been detected by the Chinese mission that has recently released all of its data, with the Zhurong rover that you see right here, that's actually traveled almost 2 kilometers in the last 780 days, releasing approximately 1.5 terabytes of data, discovering minerals that sometimes are referred to as Dury crust. 
which essentially represents a kind of a really hard layer on top, very often formed by the evaporation of water from underneath. In this case, suggesting a substantial liquid water activity based on several different minerals examined by the rover and by the lander. Which in this case implies that there was some kind of an ancient ocean in this region as well. And though it's not really that surprising to discover signs of water, the amount of water discovered in these studies is a little bit surprising. And I guess the bigger question is, where exactly did it all go? Did it go inside Mars? Did it escape into the atmosphere and then into the outer space? And is this basically what's going to happen to our planet at some point as well? But in terms of minerals, there was actually another discovery from not so long ago, specifically from the rock that you see right here, that the scientists are now referring to as the Wildcat Ridge, the rock that was recently drilled by the Perseverance rover. And so the rover in this case collected some of the samples from the surface of the rock and analyzed them using the instrument known as Sherlock, the instrument able to detect organic molecules. And in this case, the samples did indeed include some of the organic molecules, with the presence of certain sulfide minerals that, at least in theory, could have been produced by some kind of ancient life, although they could also be naturally produced through some other chemical reaction. But even though this particular molecule has actually been found before on Mars, in this case it was also found in a location that the scientists do believe could have supported life by being relatively habitable in the past. And moreover, quite a lot of these organic compounds have been discovered by this mission. And so at the moment, this is probably one of the more exciting discoveries coming from the mission, mostly because the scientists really want to understand where exactly these molecules are from. But then there were some other discoveries pertaining to the potential colonization of Mars sometime in the future, specifically the dangers of living on Mars. For example, one of the discoveries was of a completely new type of aurora, only visible in ultraviolet light, that seems to come in two different types. Sometimes it looks patchy, and sometimes it looks very localized. And in this case, it's what's known as the proton aurora, something that was originally found back in 2018, and something that occurs when the solar wind, which is essentially hydrogen atoms, strike the upper atmosphere of Mars and create various types of ultraviolet glow visible by these new instruments. And it looks like a lot of these patchy aurora seem to form when turbulent conditions around Mars let through some of the charged particles and then focus them on certain points following the magnetic lines, which forces some of these particles to glow, although the actual mechanism is still not clear. The scientists are still trying to figure out exactly why they're formed and how exactly they work, but we'll discuss some of these ideas in one of the previous videos you can find in the description. Either way though, this definitely tells us a little bit more about various types of radiations coming from the Sun, striking the surface of Mars, and will hopefully help us prepare for any potential mission. Then there was some good news. This is what's known as MOXIE. An instrument on the Perseverance rover whose main purpose was to try to create oxygen by using carbon dioxide, or essentially testing the electrolysis technology that converts CO2 into breathable oxygen. And the results from this were quite successful in the beginning of the mission, we've discussed this I guess a year and a half ago, but since then MOXIE has been used 7 times, and it produced a total of approximately 50 grams of oxygen, enough for a single person to breathe for almost 2 hours naturally providing some good news for any potential crude mission that might happen one day in the future. And lastly, we have some new updates from the InSight mission, the mission that became famous for having so many different issues, with the recent one being dust, dust covering everything including the solar panels. But it's still active and it's still operating, and it's actually still sending some data back, and recently it sent some really intriguing data detecting first ever collisions of various meteoroids with the surface of Mars but by literally listening to them. And in this case, we also get to hear it as well. Let's actually listen first. And this sounds super, super cool, kind of sci-fi-ish actually. You actually are hearing as the meteoroid is entering the atmosphere, you're also hearing its explosion as the pieces hit the ground. All of this detected by super sensitive instruments on board the InSight mission. And in this case, it was able to pick up four separate objects, with all of them happening in 2020 and 2021. With the distances being between about 85 to 300 kilometers away from the location, suggesting of course that all this was pretty far away, which also means that these instruments are just super sensitive. But it was really the collision from that first meteoroid that was the most exciting. It seemed to have separated into three separate shards, with all three then hitting the surface. And then all three were detected by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter when it flew past this location, confirming the collision 
and of course confirming the detection, with the other three also visible here as well. But here there's still a bit of a mystery. Between 2020 and 2021, only four of these collisions were detected, but technically the scientists expect way, way more. I mean, the surface of Mars is covered in different craters, so we do think that they should be more frequent. As a matter of fact, this mission has already detected approximately 1300 different earthquakes, or technically Mars quakes, and in that sense, we kind of expect to have just as many meteorite collisions as well, but they don't seem to happen as frequently for some reason. Although in this case, the scientists think that maybe it's because of the wind. Maybe the wind and the sounds from the wind cover some of these collisions, making them kind of difficult to hear. And so possibly by reanalyzing some of the data, they might discover some of the other ones that somehow was missed by scientists during the original analysis. And so that's pretty much it for now for all of the updates from planet Mars. A lot of interesting things, a lot of new things, and quite a lot of things suggesting that maybe just maybe a crude mission might be a reality, at least in some sense. But we'll probably talk more about all of this in some of the future videos as well. Subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that also features the Martian mission as well. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.